Hey there, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a state-driven workflow to a SharePoint online list using Microsoft Power Automate. So before we get into building the flow in Power Automate, let's just take a quick look at our SharePoint list. Uh, this list is an invoice tracker, so it's used to record invoices that need to go through a review and approval workflow. Um, and you can see here we've got multiple columns. Now, what we're going to do with this workflow is we are going to have um, invoices that are entered into the SharePoint list um, be sent for approval via email and the status column is what is going to trigger and drive um, the workflow. So let's just take a look at the different options in the status column. So whenever an item is added to this list, the status will default to pending approval. Um, once an item is added and it's at pending approval state, an email notification will be sent to a manager for review. The manager will either approve it, that invoice or item in this list or they'll send it back to the requester um, and if it's approved then it will be moved on to our finance personnel who will ultimately pay it um, and if the finance person needs more information um, then it will go back to the requester now you'll note we don't have a rejected state in this workflow um, you could easily add a rejected status and mimic the steps that i'm about to show you okay um, now let's go over to Microsoft Power Automate and let's start building our workflow. All right, uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to click on Create and then you wanna go ahead and click on Automated Cloud Flow. Okay, we wanna give this flow a name. I'm going to call this Invoice Workflow. And the next step is to select your trigger. The trigger that we're going to use is when an item is created or modified. Now it's important that you select when an item is created or modified when you're implementing state-driven workflows uh, because, it, because it's going to be the change in the status that triggers and drives um, the email notifications to the different individuals in the workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on when an item is created or modified and click on create. Okay, now the first thing that you need to do here is select the SharePoint online site that your list was created on. In my example, it was created in my leadership team. And then you want to go ahead and select the list name and I'm gonna select my invoice tracker. Okay, now you wanna go ahead and click on new step. Okay, and then the first thing we're going to do here is click on control. Control actions allow us to implement conditional statements. So we're gonna go ahead and click on switch. Now, a switch case allows us to implement multiple conditional checks, okay? So the first thing you need to do with a switch case is what are we switching on? And in this case, um, you wanna click on the choose value and we wanna click on the status value in the dynamic content pane, okay? So this represents the uh, value that was selected in the status column. So this is going to be what we switch or we route our workflow on, okay? Um, so our first status was pending approval. So we're gonna go ahead and enter that status into the case action where it says equals. So if the status value equals pending approval, then do something. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and click on added action. And what I'm going to do is type in send an email. Okay, um, now what we're going to do with this email is we're actually gonna pipe in some dynamic content. So we'll start with the two. So if you click into the two field, okay, and then you click on add dynamic content, we can actually pipe in some of the content from the item in the list that actually triggered this workflow. So we are going to go ahead and select manager email. Okay, now for the subject, I'm going to add in some um, static text and some dynamic text, and I'm going to say invoice for approval. Okay, and I am going to um, put in the invoice title. Okay, and now I'm gonna click on the body of the email, and I'm going to add a mix of static and dynamic content. So I'm going to say hello, and I am going to put in the manager display name. Please review the following invoice, okay? And we are going to again pipe in the invoice title. 
Okay, we are going to put in the requester and we're going to select the requester display name. Okay, we're going to put in the invoice amount. And we can just search for it here, invoice amount. Okay, we're going to plug in the vendor name. Okay, um, and we're just going to leave it there. Again, you could add in any dynamic content from the item. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to say, if you approve, please update the status of this invoice to approved using the following link. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a hyperlink to the item. Okay, so I'm going to select link to item and there you go. So I'm going to save this. Perfect. So we've now added our first case. Now to add another case, what you want to do is you want to click on this little plus sign here. Okay, and again with our case statements, the first thing we need to do is actually um, set the, the condition that should um, trigger this particular action block. And so again, the next step in our workflow is approved. Okay, and then we want to click on add an action and we're going to look for send an email again. We're going to select the send an email v2 and we're going to click into the to field and click on add dynamic content and in this case we're going to select the finance person's email okay and then we're going to update our subject and say review invoice for payment okay now we're going to add the body of our email hello and we're going to put in the finance person's display name please process the following invoice for payment and again we're going to add in some um, content so we're going to say invoice title and we're going to click on the title invoice date and we're going to add the invoice date okay we're going to add in the invoice amount we're going to add in the vendor name Okay, um, and what we're going to do here is there is the possibility that the finance person picks up this invoice and needs more information. So we're going to say, if you require additional information, please enter comments into the comments field using the following link. And we're going to add in a link to the item. Okay. And then we're going to say, please be sure to update the status to more information required. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click save. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add our next case. So we're going to click on the add case button. Now our condition is if the status is more information required. Okay. Now we're going to click on add an action. Now we're going to search for send an email. Now we're going to go ahead and click into the to field. And in this case, again, if the status is more information required, we are going to send this back to the requester. So we're going to click on the add dynamic content and select requester email. In the subject line, we are going to say uh, invoice requires more information. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the body. And we're going to say hello, requester display name, the following invoice requires additional information for processing. Please review the following comments and provide this information. Okay, now we're going to add in the comments and now we're going to say, please be sure to update the status to approved once complete using the following link and we're going to put in a link to the item okay um, now we're going to go ahead and click save 
All right, perfect. Um, so we're going to test this out. So to test out one of these flows, you want to go ahead and click on the test button. And in this case, I'm going to click on manually. All right, now I'm going to open up my list here and I am going to add a new item. And I'm just going to add myself into each of these roles. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. All right, so you can see here, I've now flipped over to my Outlook and you can see that I've received an email. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and you can see the subject is invoice for approval. Pipe in the description, which is invoice for new cell phone. Okay, hello me, please review the following invoice, invoice title, requester name, invoice amount, vendor name, all piped in dynamically from the actual item or record in the SharePoint list. If you approve, please update this status to approved using the following link. Okay, I'm gonna come back into my SharePoint online list. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the status to the next status in our workflow, which is approved. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Okay, and we'll expect to receive the next email in this workflow, which is being sent to the finance person. Okay, so I'm gonna open my Outlook here and we can see that the next um, email was fired in this workflow. So this email was directed to the person that was um, listed in the finance column. So hello me, please process the following invoice for payment. You can see again, I've piped in some dynamic content. I've got the link to my item that I can copy and paste into my browser. Um, and again, the note that if you require additional information, please enter comments into the comments field. So I'm gonna open up this item again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit it and we're gonna test out the last state, which was um, more information required, okay? And the unique thing here is again, um, if more information was required, we can enter a comment. Please be sure to attach the invoice PDF to this record. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna click save again, and we're going to see that this is gonna fire that last email there and also pipe in the comments. All right, if I open up Outlook again, you can see the last email in our workflow has fired. So invoice requires more information. Hello me, the following invoice requires additional information. You can see here the comment, please be sure to attach the invoice PDF to this record was piped in. And um, please be sure to update the status to approve um, once complete. Okay, so this tutorial showed you how to add a state-driven workflow to a SharePoint online list using Microsoft Power Automate. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like it, please add a comment below, and please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Power Automate SharePoint online tutorials. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.